Hi, and welcome back to Stop Being Sold. My name is Michelle, and I'm here with Brian. And in today's video, we're discussing the hype around indexed universal life insurance and whether or not it's a scam or possibly a good decision for you and your future and your wealth. That's a good question. <laughs> it, it really is. It's, I've even asked you, you know, a few months ago, I called you. I'm like, hey, what's up with this index universal? What's up with this? Right? right? <laughs> so, there, index universal, uh, index life, index, oh my gosh, index universal life insurance policies are also called IULs. And right. they are marketed under different names, such as like the Super Roth IRA or Section 7702 plans, which is not as sexy as the Super Roth, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, Tax-free retirement accounts, you've probably seen them under that. Bank yeah. on yourself. And there's quite a few other marketing names. You know, and if you type in okay. any of these names into Google... You see, like you see, questions like is like bank on yourself a scam, or can I lose money with a super Roth IRA, or is blank a pyramid scheme? So there's de definitely a lot of hype and a lot of misinformation around IULs. Yeah, there is, Michelle, and you know what I call it is I, I just say there's a ton of marketing hype right around IULs. And look at some of these headlines, recent headlines that I've seen in my own personal email, right? Look out below, market plunge is looming. The 401k IRA tax deferral con is exposed. Six reasons your 401k is a scam. Now, would you get on a plane you knew had a 50% of crashing? You may be riding it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, first, this is marketing 101. Yeah. Second, this is marketing fear. Sure. Could some of these happen? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The market could plunge again. We understand that. It usually does after a huge rise that we've seen like recently, right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean to run and hide from a financial product because it of that, that, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing to point out about IULs, Michelle. 2021 was a record setting year in index life sales with 2.4 billion in sales. That includes index universal life and index whole life policies. Okay. And I have highlighted and emphasized sales twice in that last statement because most of these policies are sold, not bought. Well, nobody oh. wakes up one day and says, hey, I'm going to go buy a index universal life insurance policy after do I walk the dog, right? It's you don't do that? <laughs> not on your to-do list. <laughs> Many don't even know what one is until right. an agent explains some concept around that policy, kind of like some of the marketing schemes we talked about earlier. So. Sure. Well, okay, this is actually a good point to back it up a little bit. Let's clearly define what an IUL is. Sure. Index universal life insurance IULs is the short term for it, is a type of permanent life insurance, which means it has a cash value component in addition to the death benefit. So okay. just remember that cash value, death benefit, you got both. Um, in a standard UL policy, Michelle, the cash account balance is guaranteed to grow at an interest rate based on whether it's the current market rate or a minimum guaranteed interest rate, whichever's higher. Okay. And with the IUL, the money in your cash value account can earn interest based on maybe like a stock market index chosen by you or your insurer, such as like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ composite. Some of you see the Dow, but usually it's the S&P 500 is the majority of them. So, and your funds don't earn a fixed rate of interest, but typically come with an interest rate guarantee. Right. And because of the word universal inside the name, the IUL has options that allow you to change things like the amount you pay for the insurance, your death benefits, how, how much cash value you want. So there's a lot of universality to that product. So, so is it something you can change once you have the policy or yes. is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's and usually on your annual updates. So when you're tracking indexes, they're updated on an annual basis. So you'll be able to make changes to them during that time frame. So, okay. Well, that leads me into my next question about the pros of index universal life insurance, like the benefits of it, right? So one of the benefits would be 
you have that control yes. over payments. You have that control over death benefits. Yeah, exactly. That's because of the word universal in there. Sure. You can you have the flexibility to increase or decrease your payments depending on the, the, your need for coverage, number one, and the growth of your account uh, in the, the cash value of the account and your financial situation. You're able to make changes to that. So All right. So let's let's go through a little. Let's talk a little bit more about the benefits, more benefits okay. besides control. So, um, we talked about the they track indexes, right? So your sure. stock market index driven rates of return on your cash value. Okay, okay, so that allows your account to grow a little quicker than just a standard fixed rate. Okay, and the index rate, uh, index based options, Michelle, can outperform fixed interest rates. And okay. it just depends on the environment out there, right? Uh, and that gives you the potential to increase your cash values faster while still limiting your downside risk. So that's the beauty of the index side of it. Okay. What else? Um, how about unlimited contributions? Okay. Think of your 401k and IRA. We've talked about that on many of our videos sure. of the, the limit. annual contribution limits, right? Well, you don't have them in, uh, in uh, index universal life accounts. So there's no limits to the amount of money that you can put into your policy. Okay. What else? Uh, how about tax-free growth and distributions? Okay, we, we go back to the marketing side of it. You heard that tax-free retirement account and we kept saying tax-free, tax-free in a lot of the marketing. Well, that's one of the features of this product is by using your loan features to make withdrawals from your index universal life policy, Michelle, your distributions can be free of taxation because it's a loan, it's not sure. a distribution. Okay, so let me ask you this question. If you get tax-free growth and distributions is once you pass, is there a tax-free death benefit? Like, or is that something that heirs will have to pay tax? Well, insurance policies, Michelle, um, are usually, life insurance policies, Michelle, are usually a tax-free death benefit to the heirs. I did not know that. Oh, that's okay. a big reason to that's use life insurance. a big one. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so you, we use life insurance many times, Michelle, for estate planning. So All right, sure. just for okay. that purpose. So, All right. So are there, before we go on, I want to talk about the risks or the disadvantages. Is there, are there any other uh, ad, adva advantages? Yeah, so like your, um, your no age limit for withdrawal. So you don't ah. have to wait till age 59 and a half like IRA accounts. Right. And like we talked before, the tax free death benefit to the heirs. Okay. All right. So let's dive into the risks or the disadvantages of investing. Yep. There's always a downside, right? Always, always, which is the most important to know. Yeah, <laughs> you're sold so, the pros. You're not often sold the cons. You know, uh, kind of like uh, I've seen, the, seen a one uh, marketing um, idea said you're sold the steak, but not the sizzle. So. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, Index Universal Life is a complex product and a more complex than may seem um, on the surface of it, right? So here's some disadvantages you want to watch for. First of all, the risk. Mm -hmm. uh, one risk, Michelle, is that the stock market may not rise as quickly as the illustrations have been shown yeah. to, right? So, and trust me, uh, some of the ones that I've seen that I've run across, Michelle, oh, you know, where you're showing you a 15, 16, 20% rate of return. Really? You know, that just yeah. is, un, uh, un, it just drives me nuts seeing that. Sure. Anyways, uh, the return on your investment could fail to meet your goals, which could lead to you owing oh, extra money to keep the policy in force and sure. stop it from lapsing. So you've got to yeah. be very careful on that. All right. And we said that the policies are complex, okay? These policies will take work to maintain your cash value. So okay. in years that the indexes underperform, uh -huh. okay, you may have to okay. you've got to pay more premiums into sure. the policy to maintain it. So you've got to be careful on that and you've got to stay attuned to it. When you get your statements on this, if you, you have, have to read one, them. read yeah. them, please read them. Okay, so... With IULs, these, you have to be more engaged. This isn't just a yes. set it and forget it type policy. No, no, you need Everything. to be engaged. Every time you get that annual statement, you better be involved with it. So, okay, good to and, know. And here's, here's another thing. We're talking about the indexes. Uh, here's another um, downfall is your upside is limited. You're capped on your returns based on the index caps and participation rates. Sure. Okay. 
That means you don't earn all the upside, but only the amount up to your caps. For example, let's say you're tracking the S&P 500 index, and Michelle, the cap, the annual cap is, let's say, 7%. Well, last year was up 21% in the S&P 500. Did you right. receive 21% increase in your IUL? No, you received your cap that was allotted inside there. So your cap of 7%. So, so you right. got to be careful on that because this isn't the stock market. You're not going to get the full upside potential, right. but you don't have the downside risk either. So. Exactly. Exactly. So there's All a right. trade-off there. So are there any also you got to watch the flexible fees. Okay. You know, these can increase over time. That's called the cost of insurance or mortality expenses. Look, it takes money to keep these insurance policies going, right? And okay. if the fees increase, they start to eat into your payments you make or the value of your cash account. Now, what I've seen, Michelle, is um, especially on some of the traditional UL policies, you right. look at them and every year the cost of insurance goes up. And why does it do that? because things get more expensive and you get older you get older yeah number one every insurance is based You're now on more of a liability right when yeah, it, so opposed, yep. it's just like buying a life insurance policy at 25 years old buying it at 30 buying it at 40 now yeah. you're paying double what you did at 25 right because you're getting older each year so the, sure. the odds of you dying sooner is going to happen right so yeah. the cost of insurance does go over time so you got to be careful on that all right so who is, who is this good for? Like, who are IULs good for? It's actually right good for a lot of people. And uh, you, but you need a long-term goal with this type of policy. Got it. If you can't pay the premium, I just had a, a phone call come in late last night and it was from a, another advisor in the field that had, you know, we coach advisors. So right. I had an advisor call and says, look, I got a client looking at an IUL policy. And uh, with XYZ insurance company, I said, okay, sure. great company, great policy. Um, what are you looking to do? And he said, well, he just wants to put in $300 a month, to a real nope. low base amount, and mm -hmm. then um, accumulate cash value. I said, okay, can your client pay $300 a month guaranteed uh -huh. for the next 10 years? So you can do it that. You can do that small of an amount. That's why I was like, nope. Okay. you. It's just a matter of, Whatever you say you're going to put in, you right. have to be consistent with it. Yeah, yeah. And, and so if, you know, so you got the cost of insurance and the way they run these policies, Michelle, for the, the high tax uh, free benefits uh -huh. and the big loan amounts is to have a small face amount, and, but grow the cash value quicker. Okay. okay. And that's your goal. Your goal right. isn't the life insurance portion of this. Your goal is to grow the cash value. So um, they'll overfund these policies with a lot of cash into them. But if you can't pay the premiums for a minimum of 10 years, this policy would not be a good fit for you. And that's the question I always ask my consumer if they're interested in it because because of the marketing hype that they've been given, right? Okay. And yeah. there's like, oh, these sound so great. Well, can you pay this policy for the next 10 years? That's all I ask. And they're like, well, I don't know if I can. Well, then I don't know if this is a good policy for you. Sure. It may not be a good fit. And that's my quick, easy answer. Okay. So there's many places where an IU policy may fit. And here's two common examples. Okay. Let's right. use these. Let's say you've maxed out all other contribution limits. You know, once you get all the free match of your 401k or your workplace retirement plan, and you maxed out your Roth IRA contributions for the year. Then Any remaining, remaining funds, funds right. to go into the IUL. Okay. And so, but I've seen out there, Michelle, everyone talks about, and I give you some examples in the beginning about the downside of the 401k. Sure. Why would you, why would you do this? And uh, but let's put it this way. If my employer's matching up to my first 3% of every right. dollar I put in. And why wouldn't you get that free money? Exactly. Why wouldn't I get my 100% return yeah. on my money, even if it only went into the cash account that's inside that portfolio? Right. Okay. Why wouldn't you do that first? That's just my personal opinion. Others were so far against that. It isn't funny. They said, no, nope, because you're going to end up losing it all when you pay taxes sure. in retirement. Okay. Kind of doesn't make sense, but. All right. So you said there are two common examples. That's the first one. What's the second? 
uh, let's see, if you plan on helping fund your child's education, you can use an IUL wow. to accumulate unlimited amounts of cash value. And guess what? These will not be included in as an asset when applying Ooh, for financial aid. That's a big one. That's, a, that's actually a big benefit. To a some huge people. benefit. Huge benefit. Yeah. So, okay. And we have a lot of parents watching the channel that we talk about college playing all the time. This is sure. one of the products that are used in the college playing arena. So, okay. So these, there's two examples of where it does make it sense. So. It makes sense. Right. Sure. Okay. But if you can't pay that minimum for 10 years or more, this is not right for you. Right. Right. Okay. Well, right. I, I, you know, it's funny because I had a doctor one time because they, these are heavily promoted to wealthy individuals and sure. high income earners. Sure. Okay. I had a doctor ask me one time, he says, okay, so here's what I'm looking at doing. I'm looking at putting $20,000 a month into this policy. It was a, right. the, the very well-known doctor and very prominent. Um, and I said, okay. So I asked him that question. I said, can you pay that 20,000 a month, quarter million dollars a year for the next 10 years without batting an eye at it? Right. Um, no, there's no guarantee that I can continue doing that. Well, it might not make sense for you to go into this policy then. Got so. it. Okay. All right. So let's, wrap it up and let me ask you the question that the, the point of the video do you think IULs are a scam no absolutely not I didn't um, they are after all great. this now that we know a lot more about it <laughs> right and that's that's the beauty of this uh, and why we did this video is, is the fact that these products are great for the right people right they've been around for well over 100 years and backed by some of the highest rated insurance companies in the world today so uh, but they're marketed as the how they're, that's the thing. It's how they're marketed that really, like you started, it it's and the marketing hype that makes it wrong. feel scammy and gross. Yeah. Yeah. You feel bad about it. And yeah. it's funny, um, Michelle, some new insurance advisors coming into the arena, they come yeah. into, uh, they're taught how to sell this product. Sure. Of course. But if, if I sat 10, uh, new advisors have been selling IULs for less than a year in front of me. Nine out of 10 could not explain to me every feature inside that policy and why it worked and what the negative rates were. Well, because they're, and, they're told to sell, not to sell. understand. Yeah, help right. people understand the product. And so when you show them in, in the actual policy that, oh, so if my client, if your client doesn't continue this for 10 years and say they stop paying in year three of the 10-year plan of this, uh, how long until the policy lapses? Right. They have no clue. Sure. All they have to do, though, is open up the actual policy and look at it. And it shows the exact date that that policy will lapse when that con consumer stops well, saying. Look, this is what we do on this channel. By the way, if you like this video, hit that like button. Help Thumbs us on the channel. Also, subscribe. Don't miss another video from us. But this is what we talk about all the time. Be yeah. diversified. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, as hard it is, as it is, I'm a huge you know, crypto, Bitcoin. And it's been really hard for me not just to continue to stash no matter what the market's doing money into Bitcoin. I'm like, no, 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 Michelle, there's also your Roth and there's different, you know, investment vehicles I have because you Big don't diversity. want to put your eggs in one basket and also do your own research. DYOR. Right. There you have it. Awesome. This has been really informative. Thank you so much. I now understand a little bit more about IULs. Had, I mean, I had an idea, but just, well, this is good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Again, no hit problem. that like button if you like this content. Uh, thanks, Brian. And thanks, everybody who watched. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.